Since the dawn of our civilization, the imperative to count and record activities and transactions has been a part of daily life. Our civilization and its businesses cannot function and flourish without records and information to meet the needs of society. As recorded information rapidly accumulated over time, the problem of storage and retrieval developed. Great halls of records and depositories became necessary. The need to capture, store, manage, and process information became a vital human endeavor. The story of information gathering and processing developed along both revolutionary and evolutionary paths, becoming one of the vital engines that drove society forward. Growth and success always stem from the effectiveness of the information processing methods and systems provided by scientific advancements. Information was being gathered and processed as fast as humanly possible. However, this was not good enough. The momentum for our 20th century emerged in 1834 when an eccentric English genius wrote, The whole of arithmetic now seemed to be within the grasp of a mechanism, a vague glimpse of an analytical engine at length opened out and I pursued with enthusiasm the shadowy vision. Babbage's mechanism was on its way. Two decades later, George Boole's revolutionary thinking produced the foundation for modern symbolic logic, a system that would become the basis for computer programming. The race for more, faster, better and cheaper information processing was beginning. The business of supporting business was born. It was to grow into one of the most competitive industries of the modern era. Devices of all types were developed to meet the skyrocketing demands of science, government, and business. The QWERTY and Remington typewriters. Then the first patent for the adding machine is awarded to William Seward Burroughs. Punch card processing is pioneered by Herman Hollerin. Designers and engineers rapidly developed new technologies and manufacturing techniques to address growing volumes and the increasing sophistication of information. The young information industry was growing by leaps and bounds. As part of this rapid growth, William Seward Burroughs continues to apply for patents for quicker and more reliable adding machines. Other future industry giants begin to stake their claims in this new marketplace. In 1946, the world's first automatic electronic numerical integrator and computer, ENIAC, is developed by two University of Pennsylvania engineers, John W. Mockley and J. Presper Eckert. ENIAC was a massive device that used 18,000 radio tubes and many watts of electrical power. It operated on the principle that vacuum tubes could be turned on and off thousands of times faster than previous mechanical relays. ENIAC was the revolutionary computer the military required. It could calculate trajectories in less than real time. The era of the mainframe computer had arrived. is over. Now worldwide reconstruction begins. It's the start of the most rapid growth in manufacturing, trade and commerce in history. Worldwide the information processing needs of governments, business and industry have never been greater. Based on the success of ENIAC, business support organizations establish electronic R&D facilities. The computer is moving rapidly from the lab to the office environment. Due to the success of their first computer, Markley and Eckert joined forces with Remington Rand to ultimately bring ENIAC to the commercial marketplace. Within one year of their joining the Remington Rand Corporation, Markley and Eckert developed and announced UNIVAC, the Universal Automatic Computer. Researchers at Bell Labs. Bardeen, Britain and Shockley's invention of the transistor blossoms into commercial use by the Sony Corporation, who starts selling transistor radios in 1952. Electronics as a science is now developing into an industry of its own with unique historic influences and landmarks. In 1954, the first practical silicon transistor is introduced, followed in the same year by Texas Instruments' release of the first germanium transistor. 
By the end of 1954, 20 electronic computers would be in full operation in the commercial marketplace, rapidly becoming indispensable to business people. In late 1954, the Fortran programming language is introduced, followed in 1955 by Grace Hopper's development of Mathematic and Flowmatic, the initial genesis of the COBOL programming language. The peripheral business begins to emerge in 1955 as a major revenue source for the computer manufacturers. Punch card equipment, paper tape systems, magnetic drum storage systems, line printers and card sorters are produced in ever increasing quantities. Between 1958 and 1960, the pace of demand and innovation to meet those requirements accelerates almost daily. The installed base expands rapidly and major competitors plan for future battles to hold their share of the marketplace. One major innovation of this time is the introduction of keyboard-based data entry. These systems would render punch cards obsolete in just a few short years. Also during this time, driven largely by the effectiveness of computers, more and more people are using credit cards. The frantic pace of the early 1960s rubs off on the computer industry. Typesetting by computer is introduced. Algol is fully defined. EDS is founded by Ross Perot. The Univac 1107 is released in 1962. And for the first time, computer industry revenue exceeds $1 billion. As a result of the revolutionary demands voiced to designers by business and government, the Burroughs Corporation develops and produces the B5000 computer in 1962. The B5000 family would soon win an extensive and loyal user base. This breakthrough system would forever, like ENIAC, change the way business was to work with computers. It is 1964. The era of mass computing has arrived. The computer now touches everyone's lives. Major innovations such as Burroughs Master Control Program, MCP, and multi-programming, multi-processing, and virtual memory have now been in use since late 1962. By 1965, terms like batch processing, dumb terminals, multiple stations, tape drives, and spindle memory are being heard through the halls of business. Computers have become the establishment. They now routinely compile statistics and make predictions, speed up science, and soar into and eventually win the space race. The demands imposed on the data center increase alarmingly. Operational issues escalate almost daily. The issues of cost, capacity, and access loom large and become critical decision factors. A single system might have several hundred to as many as 500 terminals, 10 or 20 printers, and banks of multiple disk packs, all requiring maintenance, management, input, and output, all at the same time. It is 1966. In business back rooms and electronic labs, another revolution is underway. Mini and microcomputers are coming into vogue. They don't require constant attention from MIS people or the full power of a mainframe computer. These minis and micros support their own printers and data storage needs. These islands of independent computing spread like wildfire throughout the business enterprise. Now, medium and small business enterprises can suddenly afford to computerize. Soon, information managers and business people must share data with other data centers to maintain mission-critical activities and compete successfully in their chosen marketplace. 1968 heralds yet another computer revolution. The Pentagon, through ARPA, has devised a packet switch network protocol and systems which allow computers to share information over standard communication infrastructures. This standard becomes the framework for distributed systems. Virtually overnight, robust networks developed beyond the confines of the local data center. By 1970, 
networks are connecting to networks and databases to other databases. The credit and reservation industries have opened a new era for computer technologies and innovations. Now, they are merging to take advantage of evolving telecommunications infrastructure. The early 1970s also saw major innovation in the areas of database technologies and the first 4GL languages. Again, revolution would change the industry. The introduction of the microprocessor created and defined another erosion in the focus on the old-fashioned mainframe computer. Soon, personal computers are offered in kit form. Hobbyists and enthusiasts were already in training for their futures. Another revolution. This announcement will reverberate throughout the computer industry very quickly. It is the release of the Unix operating system. With constant improvements in networking standards and performance, a small bank in Lincoln, Nebraska, can routinely communicate with a bank in Brussels, Belgium. With the release of the latest innovative offering from Intel, the computer world takes another very significant tech turn. As the Intel 8080 is integrated into commercially available single board computers, the term personal computer becomes a viable reality. Bill Gates and Paul Allen adapt BASIC to form the foundation of DOS. Tandy releases the TRS-80, Commodore starts to market the PET, and Apple computers arrive on store shelves and in K through 12 classrooms nationwide. By 1980, the computer, the PC, becomes available and affordable. Soon, 2.3 million of them are in use in the USA. The PC has become a true consumer product, especially with IBM's release of their personal computer line of products. The PC revolution gains momentum like an avalanche. Personal productivity tools and PC networking tools appear and sell in record numbers. The Unix operating system, first released in 1971, is just now beginning to be viewed by the industry as the potential universal industry standard. Seen as the replacement for the mini-computer, early adopters began developing platform-independent databases for this new operating environment and technology. As the number of installations grew, third-party and independent software solution providers, ISVs, began to embrace the potential of the Unix commodity platform. Industry innovators, Burroughs Corporation and Sperry Corporation joined forces and talents to become the Unisys Corporation. More and more fuel pours into the PC revolution, while industry standard databases and cross-vendor platforms begin to flourish throughout the market. By the end of the decade, many software solutions were available to provide niche applications for most business requirements and in any vertical market. PC solutions were now beginning to compete with server and database solutions created for the Unix platforms. 1989 and the world has become networked. The PC has surged ahead in innovation, creativity, capability, and astonishing price performance. The competition between Unix and PC intensifies. last two decades, the business of supporting business has become very large and very competitive. The business enterprise and the computer industry have become partners. Technological innovations and sociological changes continue to inspire revolution and evolution. There are 50 million PCs in use in the USA alone by now, and their impact both in industry and in the home office will be massive. Unix is now impacting on departmental solutions, triggering serious reviews of computing capabilities within the entire enterprise. Should all computing remain within the glass house? LANs and WANs are now defining change in productivity within many enterprises. The network era begins, and almost immediately, PCs begin to replace terminals and mini computers. Large-scale mainframe networks are being forced to embrace the openness of the PC and Unix. In the mainframe environment, 
hardware scalability and costs force MIS to embrace the cost per site economy of the PC and Unix into their total cost of ownership calculations. The adoption of the PC into the enterprise was not only proving cost efficient, but highly productive for each employee. And all this would come with minimal training or experience. By the end of 1990, the computer industry would have to solve the most difficult challenge of the decade, communicating and sharing resources across disparate hardware and operating environments. Business once again was calling for the next revolution, the shift to decentralized distributed computing environments. The conglomerates are divesting their widespread interests. The breakup creates new, more facile enterprises which demand stringent cost performance ratios. Standards become of prime importance. New standards bodies emerge to address these rapid changes and to keep up with the proliferation of open technologies. More and more, mission critical work is drawn from the mainframe. This developing distributed computing environment of PCs and Unix systems is resulting in increasingly difficult database management problems. And through these networks, data integrity and security can be too easily compromised. Downsizing became an industry buzzword, and more work goes to the desktop and to department servers. Restructuring and downsizing continues, and the demand for open versus proprietary networks expands dramatically. MIS, now referred to as information technology or IT organizations, begin to shrink. The industry will race to keep up with these challenges and are able to develop solutions, yet the required stability, scalability, and reliability does not fully meet the user's demands. Revolutionary new technologies and revisions of software continue to develop, redefining distributed environments. Downsizing now becomes right-sizing and right-costing. By 1993, the promise of the client-server environment is realized. Many enterprises have structured their entire operations around mission-critical hardware and operating environments. And while client-server functions well, these environments prove to be expensive and difficult to maintain and support. The dialogue continues, yielding more demands, more interoperability, better security, better distributed environments, better performance, easier to use, less expensive to install, administrate and operate. And all this without compromising mission critical. Heritage application environments. Another revolution is demanded. The new client server enterprise requires infinite scalability with access to the promise of the web to support the coming electronic commerce. The demands of this market, which include the broad bandwidth of multimedia, are challenging the telecommunications and computer industries alike. And with nearly 90 million PCs already in use in the USA alone, this is a market which represents great opportunity. And the final challenge? All this robust capability, all this openness must be efficiently managed and secured in the new global network environment. A shift to a new balance between distributed and centralized computing is emerging from business disruption and enterprise re-engineering difficulties. Open networks are becoming the new fashion statement as TCP IP becomes the future industry standard. The information era has begun. To compete into the next century, Enterprises are demanding a server-server, network-centric, multi-vendor, multi-OS, multi-database environment, which is scalable, affordable, and efficient. And they want it now. And the industry is poised to respond. ClearPath, the genesis of the future computing paradigm. Today, clear path. Each day starts with a vision of what to do. But the road turns, goals disappear, problems obscure the view. Too much information, nothing seems to work. Can anyone get something right? 